Everything Alternative 10670 and his Paramore Misery Business. My name is Ted. We are live at Tom, Dick, and Harry's Live at Lunch with After Midnight Project. Yeah. What's going on, guys? How's it going? How's it going? Made it to Green Bay. Yes, we did. Now, i got to ask a couple questions because we were supposed to do this last Thursday. Some mechanical problems with your mode of transportation. Oh, yeah. A bus blew up. I forgot about that. What is there to do in Iowa while you're waiting for a replacement vehicle? Um, eat amazing omelets. Yeah, and shoot humans. Yeah. Really? That's what we're doing. <laughs> I watched that stuff. And Boo Boo Trapper of us, so our sleeping base bag, when, you, when you make a turn, all the, all the bags fall on top of them. We set a bunch of luggage up on one of the bunks and everything just fell off. <laughs> we get pretty bored. So, uh, do you carry the BB guns with you on the bus, or is this all yes. this? Okay. I actually don't know what touring would be like without guns these days. Really? That's not a really bad. <laughs> he just got a new one, and it actually looks like a real gun, so our tour man, he doesn't let him bring it around. He doesn't let him walk around town with anyone. So what, what do you do from town to town? Do you have to find places to shoot these, or are you just at the back of the venue tormenting people, shooting BBs around? Not all of the above. Yeah. Walmart. You know, it was awkward, though. It's Chevelle, uh, the guitar tech was just shooting people in the crowd. Like, I'm not doing that. I just try to get rid of them. For real? Just shoot people? I mean, I mean there's a the plastic the group on their crew, but... Not a fan. They're airsoft. We are uh, we're chatting with the After Midnight Project, and uh, you guys uh, mentioned Chevelle. Just wrapped up the leg of the tour uh, with Chevelle. Uh, wrapped up in Milwaukee at the uh, the Rivers, uh, Eagles Bar in Milwaukee. The, the Rave. Beautiful building, isn't it? It's awesome. Very haunted. Did you guys see any of the ghosts that walk around that building? No, but there's a, there's this room down the pool area. Like I guess like a bunch of kids died in the pool area. There's this like random room there with a chair. It's like a, this dark room, and it. On the door it says, don't sit on the chair, or don't touch the chair. And you open up to this random chair in the middle of this little room. I sat on it for like five minutes with the door closed. And, and how was the rest of your night? <laughs> Weird. Well, you said you felt something touch your neck. Yeah, I, could, I don't know if it was spiders or what it was, but I freaked out because there was something in my neck. Like, for real? Yeah. yeah. It's it's so creepy. Yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, the, the... You've had a really busy last year with the, uh, the CD coming out, the single hit and all that stuff. But I want to talk about some of the other stuff non-musical, like the Funny or Die videos. Yes. Uh, Funnierdie.com, if you uh, look up After Midnight Project, they got a whole series of videos. And uh, one of them you're auditioning uh, for a sixth band member, yeah. which is uh, Bobby Lee from Mad TV. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how this came about. Well, we had the idea of doing like a kind of cross-promotion thing where we kind of we find like comedians or actors and just literally just say, hey, let's do some improv together and see how it goes. So we're like, okay, the idea is we're looking for a six band member, and that was all we said. So Bobby Lee came in, and it was just, if you watch it, it was completely improv. Everything you see in there, it was like, it was all improvised. Yeah, it was really funny. I don't, I don't want to spoil it for anybody that's going to go look for it, but whose idea was it for Bobby Lee to strip down and get naked? That was how it happened naturally. naturally. It happened naturally. It's just, literally, he started getting naked, and we're like, all right, let's go with it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was any kind of warning or anything. Yeah. And what was it like when he came towards you to give you a hug? You know, he, I, he needed a hug. <laughs> you know? Because you're, you're, not, you're not a small guy. I'm 6'5", and he's 5. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it, was it, was, it was quite the interesting moment of, of seeing Bobby Lee just kind of nestle into you a little bit. Yeah. Stark ass naked. <laughs> The funny thing is, he actually has. An, I, I, him and I became friends after that. I saw him at a barbecue a couple weeks ago, and uh, or a couple of months ago, and he was like, he won't watch his own stuff. So he, he's never seen it. Yeah, he still hasn't seen it. I mean, he won't watch his. We tried to get him to go watch it, and he didn't do it. So how is it seeing a guy after you give him a naked man hug? That's gotta be a little awkward, isn't it? Yeah. Well, when he walks up to you and gives you a hug in real life, he just puts his head into your chest. That's all he does. He doesn't like hug you. Just kind of puts his head in your. He's a weirdo. He's a weirdo. <laughs> We are uh, we're live at lunch with uh, After Midnight Project. We were chatting a little bit uh, before we went on the air about the, uh, the CD, Take Me Home has done really well, and we were chatting about uh, other singles that, that may be coming out next. Can you give us a little preview of what might be next? Have you guys decided yet? We haven't decided. We have a couple in mind. And actually, yeah, we're going to play a couple other songs, but uh, as far as whether or not they're singles. Yeah. If, yeah, how about if you're listening, you guys can email us and tell us yeah. what you think the next single should be. Perfect. Let's yeah. do it, because, you know, uh, your CD, we were talking a little bit, and I know it, it sounds trite because you guys are here, but it's one of those CDs you can listen front to back, and there's not a song that sucks. Yeah, that's Thank you. That's nice. You know, every every now and then, the, the people here in attendance have probably picked up a CD from a band, and there's a couple on there that you're going, why the hell would they even record that? Yeah. 
fillers, no fillers. So, you no, know, like you said, fillers in the album, but you guys had a lot to pick from, right? Yeah, yeah. We we have a hundred song, hundred songs written before we narrowed it down to eleven. So we definitely we had a lot to choose from. So we didn't want to have any filler songs and you know, any throwaways. And uh, now I, I do have to ask you the question, just because uh, there were a lot of people that were really excited that I was talking to BJ's son. Yep, BJ. Uh, Jason, uh, the lead singer of After Midnight Project, uh, his dad was BJ from BJ and the Bear, if you guys are uh, familiar with that show at all. But you said he's also a great musician. Amazing. Amazing pianist, singer, uh, saxophone player, he plays with all the instruments. He's a really talented guy. So now, it was either going to be music or acting for you then? Yeah, for me, yeah. Well, it's funny, for him actually, he started on Broadway. So he started, uh, like, he had a band and that's, that's what he wanted to do. And his friend's like, hey, come down and try out for this play with me. It's called Jesus Christ Superstar. He's like, nah, I don't want to act. He's like, just do it, come on. He came down, <clears throat> got the part as Jesus. Okay. And then uh, from there on, he started acting. And, you know, and he always sang the theme songs in his TV shows. So he, wrote, really? he, wrote me, he wrote the theme song for BJ and the Bear, My Two Dads, and he sang them too. So it's a little fact. So basically, music was in your blood from the start. Yeah, he, he really got me into music early. He was like, you know, when I was little, he put a guitar in my hand or a drum kit and play. Yeah. Now, Spencer, how'd you get your start? Oh, uh, similar. My dad's a piano player. He plays for me. Okay. Accomplished okay. jazz. So now, uh, when you say accomplished jazz, does he kind of did he try and lead you into that format? No. Or let you go I thought, growing up, I thought jazz and classical was lame. Really? Like Nirvana and stuff. And then now I'm, I'm like way into that stuff. So. Can he hammer out a Nirvana tune on the piano? Oh. <laughs> he's told us, you were just in the bathroom. His dad calls him every day, like, because the Green Day song was on. What do you say? He's, 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 he kind of yells he's when he talks. He's yeah. like, what's with this song, man? There's three chords and it's a simple melody. We'll write something like that, man. Let's write something like that. <laughs> I got him on these four chords. Go on this. <laughs> He's like, he, he, like, he like brings up hip hop songs. He's yeah. like, you know, you know, where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. I'll be hit. Come on. And he's laughing at everybody. So, what is your songwriting process like? Um, usually, it just starts with an acoustic or a piano, and um, or sometimes just like a guitar riff. You know, like, like a heavy guitar riff. It's okay. Like, I take me home, for instance, start off with just a uh, just uh, just a guitar riff. And I was. I was I was working on that for a while, and I, I, I recorded all the music first, and then I wrote the melody after. Um, usually I kind of write the like the melody and the music first, and lyrics later, too, so that's kind of how it usually goes. So it's music first? Yeah, usually. Or sometimes I'll write a poem, and then I'll write music to that. that that's that's rare for me. What's the quickest song you've ever written? Because you always hear songs or uh, stories that musicians will be on the bus, yeah. they'll hammer something out in 20 minutes. The quickest song ever written, um, I'd say... Uh, so the first song of the album, Black Lit Medley, was written really, really quick. That was like a one-nighter kind of thing. Um, I don't know, there's a, there's a few, what do you think? So that one does come to mind. I remember you showed me like the day after you yeah. kind of had the guitar and the melody for that. And, like, some, of the, some of the songs, like like even the criminal, like, I, I wrote it all one day. Okay. And then, you know, and then we changed it up when we recorded the album. So, but, you know. Scream for You is pretty quick. Cool. Oh, Scream, I, that, that was the quickest one. Scream for you. I remember I, I was actually in the studio with Papa Roach, and they were looking for some new songs. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna write a song for them. So I, so I went home and I wrote this song. Um, kind of, I wrote a song for like the fans. I felt like, you know, Jacoby is really close with his fan, and, I, and so am I. So I kind right. of wrote a song, and then I the next I recorded it that night, and I was like, oh crap, I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> but I showed it to them, and they're like, yeah, we'll use it, we'll use it. I'm like, ah, sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm not sure you guys. And they're like, you can't, you can't get away. So that was a quick one too. Right on. Well, can we get you to play for us pretty quick? Yeah, totally. Uh, after Midnight Project, we are at Tom, Dick, and Harry's. We are live at lunch, and uh, this is a song you've been hearing for the last couple of months. It's been blowing up the radio. This is Take Me Home, After Midnight Project, and everything else. Turn it And we're good. There we go. <laughs> a close call. We'll, we'll, all right, take two. Gotta love live radio. We'll take two. Here's Take, take Me two. Home, After Midnight Project on 106.7 Zone.